The state is Guanajuato is actually the center of Mexico, right, right in the center, and the the city is Leon. It's a it's a pretty big city, very different from Modesto, which is my hometown now. But we ended up here because my grandfather lived here. He was a U.S. citizen, even though he was raised in Mexico. We moved here because. It would be a good opportunity for me to practice my English. I'd been studying English since I was in first grade. I went to bilingual school, and I saw how much more opportunities I would have um, for, you know, if I wanted to continue with my education. So I went to Modesto Junior College for a couple years, and then I moved to San Diego once I felt ready and where I could support myself. And I was so proud. Um, San Diego was beautiful. They had the school that I wanted to go to. So I wanted to go to San Diego State because I had worked for a DoubleTree Hotel and I liked hotel management. And San Diego State had a, a good program for hotel management, which very few state schools have. And so I transferred to a DoubleTree down there. I was working and going to school. My boyfriend had moved down there as well. We're going to Mexico just for the night, um, to Rosarito since it's right there. And it was actually my boyfriend's plan. He wanted to go there and I had to work. But it was one of those things that you're really sure about. I, I knew I would go even though I had to work. I just had a feeling I would be able to go. And it would I know it would have made his night. He was really hoping I could go with him and his friends. His friends were visiting from Modesto. So I did. I got off of work early. We were on our way there. I remember it was a very happy night. We were very happy that it was working out the way we wanted to. And um, we were on our way there. We grabbed a taxi because we wanted to be more responsible and not drink and drive, trying to be safe. And we were almost there. And I guess the headlights weren't working very well of the cab. I was right behind the taxi driver. My boyfriend was right next to me. and. So there was a horse just on the road. We hit the horse, and because we were going about 80 miles an hour, it was just big impact on it. Because I don't remember anything, and my boyfriend tried to push me down. I mean, you know, he didn't have time to do much. He didn't have time to save himself and me. But he pushed me down and protected me and saved my life because the impact, I guess, the horse crushed the, the roof almost all the way down to seat level, so I, I wouldn't have made it, you know, and I'm just so thankful that God gave me a second chance and that he was there and he was my angel and protected me and, and he, it just, it's a miracle because he was killed instantly, unfortunately. He was a lot t taller than me and mm -hmm. just crushed his skull. But yet, he had enough time to react and you know, save me. And so, I mean, it was hard in the beginning, of course, and the why me and all of that. But for me, having that comparison, that pain, I mean, it was the biggest loss by far, by yeah. far. And I think it just put things into perspective and it allowed me to not focus on this as much. For me, it was like I had something bigger than that that I didn't ignore what was happening to me and the losses in terms of mobility and stuff, and those were hard to go through. But pretty soon, I remember I had amazing family support. One of my aunts said, just remember, you're not a victim, you're a survivor. And that just struck me. And I told her, yes, and I'm going to live my life as a survivor. So very sure, I made the decision. I am not going to victimize myself. Because I'm not a victim. I, I, I'm so lucky and blessed to be alive and I, I want to have a good life and I want to um, inspire other people and touch anybody that I can and if anybody can learn from my lesson or my story. He was a very happy person, had an amazing outlook on life, very positive, was going to school. In fact, he wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. He was very driven. And the fact that, you know, he did that for me, I wanted to make sure he knew he didn't die in vain and I would do everything to make a good life and, and you know, be positive about everything for me. Thankful with God first and for him too, so that he was, you know, looking down on me and I wanted him to be proud. Um, be a 
able to get my career, and I'm on my way there. I'll be graduating next year from from CSU Stanislaus Trollock. I'm majoring in communications, and my emphasis is PR. One of the classes I'm most excited about is called PR Campaigns. It's a hands-on class. I took PR last semester since it's my concentration, but it's all by the book, and it's important to know. But this time we get to apply all those concepts. We're working with United Way, we're a local United Way on a program. They have the program 211, and we're working with them because not enough people know about the program. So we're working on just getting the word out there, and it's been really interesting to know, I guess, learn a little bit more how it really works. And it's going to provide me with, like, you know, it's like a portfolio and I can show people this mm -hmm. is what I've done. And not only that, like I said, we're helping the community. That's, that's major for me. Mm -hmm. Communications, I would say, is the best major for me. I am very convinced. That later on in life, I might want to do something else. But um, there's nothing else I would want to do now. I'm very passionate about my field as of now. We'll see when I get out there. I'm planning on doing um, PR for hospitals. I would like to stay in hospitals and I would really like to work with communication skills with doctors and not only doctors but uh, nurses. Nurses, You know obviously since I've been in this situation I've been in the hospital numerous times and uh, it, it has been really hard to communicate with them and I would like to work so, if I do PR, I want to do PR for a group that where we're helping people. I want to feel like I'm helping somebody. Josh and I met through a friend. My friend was dating, my best friend was dating her, his friend. So, just kind of. Well, that's great. Mutual friends. Mm -hmm. And um, things are going really well with him. I remember thinking, obviously, they they have to be okay with the wheelchair and everything that goes with it. Be patient and, you know, if it's not one thing, it's another, you know, something always comes up uh, being in a wheelchair and you just have to kind of take it as it is. So that was one of, one of the first things, but uh, because I'm still very close to my late boyfriend's family and I wanted him to, he didn't have to understand my relationship with them, but just that he was respectful because they're my family and they will be my family forever. Josh and I have a really good relationship. And I've been talking about all along my amazing, super strong mother that I'm so thankful to have for since she's been my rock my whole life and given me the confidence that I needed to get through everything, the support, the just the, the drive to do everything I wanted to do. It's fuerte. Y es una, dije, una persona excepcional. Gracias. Ah. <laughs> ah. She said, I've always been um, perseverant and determined and strong will since I was very little and she said that since all of, you know this injury I've become a stronger person and that she is amazed every day but and she just made me cry basically